In this video, we'll take a look at three different techniques that can be used to enable filtering on RadGrid view for WinForms. We'll take a look at enabling basic filtering on the RadGrid view, Excel-like filtering, and we'll also take a look at implementing a completely custom filter on the RadGrid view as well. So as you can see, I currently have a solution open in Visual Studio that contains three different projects. Each of these projects contains a basic RadGrid view where filtering has not yet been enabled, and this RadGrid view is actually bound to products information coming from the AdventureWorks database. So let's go ahead and take a look at the basic filtering application in action before we actually enable filtering on the RadGrid view. So I'm going to click Run, and as you can see, here is the RadGrid view, and it's pulling back the products information from the AdventureWorks database. And I currently have no way to narrow this information down, say if I wanted to search for a particular product or a particular type of product. Well, let's go ahead and enable that on this RadGrid view. So I'm going to switch back over to uh, the form designer. I'm going to select the RadGrid view. And then here in the properties window, I'm going to scroll down to the enable filtering property. And then I'll just double click it to set it to true. And as you can see, it's added a new filter bar just below the top row of the RadGrid view. So now when I run this application, I can use that filter bar to filter down to different items in the RadGrid view. So let's say I want to look for bikes. So I'm just going to type bikes in here. And then I want a bike that is, let's say, blue. And then, as you can see, the uh, filter has taken care of filtering all of the data for me and I now have a much more manageable list of objects to choose from. So that's how you enable the most basic filtering on the RadGrid view. Let's switch back to Visual Studio and I'm going to switch to another project, the RadGrid view Excel-like filtering project and I'll just double click the form to open it. And as you can see it contains the same exact type of project. I'll just go ahead and set this as the startup project as well. And this project again is just a RadGrid view that has been bound to the products table of the AdventureWorks database. So I'm going to go ahead and enable Excel-like filtering on this. So over here in the property window, now that I have the RadGrid view selected, I'm going to again scroll to the enable filtering property and I'll set that to true. And I'm actually going to hide this filtering bar. So to do that, I'm going to scroll down to Show Filtering Row. So let's find that here in the Properties list. And I'll double click that to set it to false. And then finally, uh, for the Excel-like filtering, I'm actually going to need to double click the Show Header Cells button to set it to true. And as you can see, it's added little filtering icons to each of the headers. So again, I'm just going to run this application. And we'll take a look at it in action. So as you can see now, when I click on these little icons, I have a nice selection of checkboxes I can use, and it just provides a more interactive way of filtering the items in the grid. So again, I'm just going to search for bikes, and I'll select that and click OK. And then I want the bike to be blue, so I'm going to again select a color, and I'll go ahead and uncheck all, and I'll select blue and click OK. And as you can see, it's narrowed down this list quite a bit and it's made it much more manageable. So moving on, let's take a look at one more type of filter. So I'm going to close out of the Excel-like filtering project, and I'm going to switch over to the custom filtering project. First I'll set it as the startup project, and then I'll double click on the form to open it in the designer. And as you can see, this project contains a rad grid view, much like the other projects, except for here at the top, I've also added a text box where we're going to type a uh, custom search text and based on what we type we're actually going to filter down the RadGrid view in a custom way where we highlight uh, the specific items that actually match our filter. So let's get started by jumping into the code behind. As you can see I've already set up a couple of event handlers. This first event handler detects when the text has been changed on our custom filter text box. The second event handler gets called by RadGrid view if I've enabled custom filtering. And it's actually going to call this method for each row of the RadGrid view. In order for the RadGrid view to call this custom filtering event, 
we're first going to need to enable a couple of properties on it. So I'm going to enter the form one load event right here, and I'm going to say radgrid view dot enable filtering equals true. And then I also need to enable custom filtering on top of this. So I'm going to say radgrid view one dot enable custom filtering equals true as well. And now that we've enabled those, the custom filtering event will get called. So let's also set up our text changed event for the text box. So I'm going to erase this comment and I'm going to type radgrid view one dot master template dot refresh. And this is going to refresh the radgrid view based on the results of our custom filter whenever it detects that users have typed uh, something new into the custom filter text box. So now that custom filtering is enabled and the radgrid view is being refreshed whenever the user types a new filter, I'm going to go ahead and paste in the last block of code we'll need for this application. And I'll go ahead and explain to you how it works. So as I was saying earlier, the custom filtering event actually gets called for each row of the radgrid view. This first block of code checks to see if our custom filter text box is empty, and if it is, it sets the row that's being processed to be visible because no filter is currently being applied. This code also makes sure to reset the styling on each cell of the current row being processed because we're actually going to highlight it and some code later on in this method. After this row has been processed, this block of code then returns because it doesn't need to apply any further styling or anything to the row since the filter is empty. For the next block of code, it begins by setting the current row that's being processed to not be visible. It then loops through each of the columns contained within the row and retrieves the values of each of their cells. For each cell, it performs a simple string comparison to see if the filter that was typed by the user matches the data contained within the cell. If it does, it then applies a simple background color, which is a light blue color, to that particular cell to show the user that the cell matches their filter. Following this, it sets the row to be visible so it shows it to the user. If the current cell does not match the filter, it's reset to be in its default style. So now that you know how this code works, let's go ahead and run the application and take a look at it in action. So let's say I want to again look for a, a product that is colored blue. I'm just simply going to type blue and as you can see our custom filter is being applied and it highlights the particular cells and narrows down the rows being displayed to me uh, based on the cells that contain a value of blue. I can again try a different kind of filter. Let's say I type bikes and as you can see it again filters down to those particular rows that contain cells with that text. I hope you've enjoyed learning about using filtering with the radgrid view for WinForms. Thanks for watching.